Can you spot the difference between these PCBs? This one is the new one. You can tell because this says version 1.2, version 1.3. This one's got some very small changes. There's a new standoff hole over here by the encoder, uh, which should help because not all the encoders have the threaded bushings. So um, if you're assembling without one, then you can use this standoff instead. And also the components are shifted around slightly. I found that the through hole and the SMD versions were not quite consistent. So this one should properly fit these new faceplates. Um, and so I'm going to build this up. And the way that we do that, of course, is to stuff it with parts like these potentiometers, which stick in there. But they wobble a little bit before you solder them. So the way that you get them aligned, of course, is to put the panel on and then flip it over and solder it. But when you flip it over, it doesn't exactly sit flat. The panel doesn't hold all the way through. So what you would do typically is just put it into one of these PCB holders. But getting it into one of these is sort of a complex operation. It takes two hands. It's not super repeatable. And there's a possibility that the parts will shift while you're putting it in. So what I think I'd like to do is make an assembly jig so that we can just use a piece of wood like this, put a faceplate on it, and there are holes for all the components to poke through uh, and just be held in place securely while we solder. So what we'll do is cut this board down to size and then attach the faceplate to it and drill some holes through this to locate some cutouts on the other side for all the components that need to stick through the front panel so that we can just set the board right on here and have it held perfectly in place so that we can solder. Here is our cut down board, and we can just locate the front panel on here somewhere. We've got the two big knots in this piece, so I'm just going to try and make sure that the places we need to drill through for these potentiometers, as well as the encoder and the jacks, we don't need to drill into any of those knots. So we'll just put that one behind the front panel like that and screw it in place. All right, and I think we're ready to drill. For the most part, this is going to be a sacrificial faceplate. We're probably not going to put it on a module after we're done with it. Uh, but I do want the uh, clearances to stay relatively tight on all of these holes. I don't want to drill them out any larger than they have to be because then the parts won't uh, be held in place exactly. So I'm going to try and center this really accurately. And uh, rather than using the maximum size drill bit that I can fit, I'll use the one that slides in easily. So we can just check the clearances for the parts. Here are the 3.5 millimeter jacks, and they slide in and sit flush with the front panel just fine. No resistance at all. And the potentiometers go all the way in until they hit the bushing. It's probably kind of hard to see that, but they don't quite go all the way in because this drill bit is a little bit undersized for these holes, and the next one up I have is a little bit too big. So rather than drilling out the panel, we're going to take that off and then enlarge the holes underneath. Uh, but before we do that, while the panel is precisely in place, uh, I would like to slightly drill out spots for these LEDs because they can sit flush with the panel and that looks okay, but I think they look a little bit better because they have a round top if they sit just a little bit proud. So I'm going to get a small drill bit and then set the depth stop for the drill so that I can just take off a tiny little bit underneath each of these cutouts. Okay, so that is the jig just about done. As you can see, there's still a couple of places we need to draw. I don't have any of the buttons on hand that I would need to make the measurement for this. Uh, and then we need to do, obviously, the gate lead. And then there are two missing cutouts that I just forgot to put on this front panel for the glide button and its lead. So I need to measure and mark those on the panel before I can drill those out. Uh, but first, I'm just going to make it a little bit easier on myself to assemble these and put some mechanical retention in that doesn't involve some screws. So I'm going to screw this panel back down to the board, and then we're going to align some wood spacers 
with one flat edge to the top and to the side so that we can just slide this panel into place and know that it's registered. Okay, so while that glue is setting up, I'm going to try and locate the missing cutouts on these panels for the glide button and its LED and hopefully be able to save some of these uh, or at the very least just use them for testing. So I'm going to have to make some marks through these tiny little vias, which means I'm going to need to use some really tiny drill bits uh, and just locate this in the right place, which we should be able to do visually because there is silkscreen printing on a lot of these cutouts that lets us see where they're supposed to align. Well, you can probably just barely see that, but there are some four dots there and two dots there. And if we connect at the center of those, we should find the cutouts on the front panel. All right, I think that came out pretty well. There's no uh, burr or tear out on the front. Obviously it's not wood, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't split in the same way. Dealing with fiberglass is kind of a whole different beast, but I think I may be able to salvage these. I've got about a dozen of these panels that have this precise problem, but uh, I will try and basically use this one as a template, mark out the rest, and then drill matching holes for them. Assuming there's no other problems I find once I solder these, maybe I should do that first. Speaking of which, our template should be about dry. There's the template. These aren't 100% dry yet, but they'll hold in place as long as I don't lever on them. And uh, yeah, there is automatic registration. So let's put some components on the board and see if it fits. Well, I think that came out pretty well. It certainly held in place firmly, and it's reasonably easy to get in and out. Uh, I might want to make a couple changes. Probably want to widen the potentiometer shaft holes a bit because they are uh, producing a little bit of friction, and maybe I want to relieve the inside edges of these so that it's easier to slide the faceplate on. Uh, but that'll have to wait until the glue dries. And in any event, I can get started on soldering all of these parts now. So that is what I'm going to go do. And thank you very much for watching. I hope that was interesting. Just a quick one today. But yeah. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.